Dear audience, Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Khuram Shahzad from National University of Modern Languages, Islamabad. Since we have started to talk about syntax, I am going to deal with chapter number two, the structure of a phrase, or in other words, we can say phrase structure. For this chapter, I will be following Peter Sells, his book Syntax and Introduction. So this chapter starts from words to major phrase types. So in the very first part of this chapter, the author talks about lexical categories. Of course, we have already talked about that syntax means syntactic structures. So we are going to look at that how syntactic structures they help construct clauses or bigger clauses. Remember, syntax starts with a word. And then these words, they are put together to form phrases. Phrases can also be called in the terminology of syntax constituents. And then these constituents, when they are put together, we get a clause. Clause can be a sentence, but when two or more than two clauses, they are joined together, we get a bigger sentence. So in the figure 2.1, you can see that word will help us to make a phrase and phrase, phrases when they are put together, we get a clause. Clause can be a sentence, but when some clauses, they are put together, we get a bigger sentence. The weather is lovely today. I am hoping that the weather is lovely today. So something which is given in brackets is basically a complete clause. But I am hoping that it is added and we are going to get a bigger sentence. If the weather is lovely today, then we will go out. Basically, the weather is lovely today, you know, before it the word if is added and then it becomes a subordinate clause. We will go out, it becomes, you know, a complete sentence, a complete clause, an independent clause. The birds are singing because the weather is lovely today. Anyways, so in this video, I will be talking about lexical categories and what kind of criteria Peter Sells explains to determine that something is a lexical category or not. Peter Sells talks about three different criteria. Number one, meaning criteria, criterion, morphological form and syntactic functions. So these three criteria, they will help explain lexical categories and we will see that how much reliable they are, whether they work or they fail. So first of all, we take meaning criteria. Of course, lexical categories, they are formed from grammatical categories or lexical words. For example, in English, we have got nouns, verbs, you know, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions. So these words are there and we will have to see the kind of notional definitions that our teachers, they have taught us, whether these notional definitions, they help us understand the meaning of the words or not. So notional definition of a noun is that it refers to an individual or entity. So Khurram, Karachi, New York, London, of course, they are the entities. But then we have got Words like sincerity, happiness, pain, are they individual or are they denoting some entity? It becomes very difficult. That is why the author says that they are notional definitions. Verb, verb usually refers to an action. But what about appear, remain, exist? Do they show any kind of action? Adjective A, it refers to a property 
property here means property of a thing good boy good girl so goodness is the property of a boy or of a girl here but words like assassination and construction may refer to an action rather than an individual but they are always nouns so it means that the criterion of meaning it is not very reliable when we are talking about lexical categories and how lexical categories they can be formed the second criterion presented by peter sells is morphological form so in morphological form noun it can be made plural by adding s or es noun it can have a possessive s possessive apostrophe s ali's car the car's book george's camera verb so verb can be formed by adding ed which is the past form so ed which is a suffix it can be added to the base form and in this way past form can be made or third person singular s or es adjective it can have er or est as a suffix or more or most and adverb it can have ly such type of suffix according to these frames where the word in question goes in the place indicated by dash noun allows the plural marking suffix s or es to be attached or possessive s whereas verbs can have the past tense ed or the third form es so we can have some examples from peter sells trains actors rooms mans sisters verb we can have laughed or laughs adjective we can have fuller for less more careful most careful adverb we can have fully carefully diligently and clearly the morphological properties of each lexical category cannot be overridden verbs can't have plural marking nor can adjectives have tense marking yes verbs they cannot have plural and adjectives they cannot have tense marking tense meaning time so adjectives they cannot show us the time it turns out however that these morphological criteria are also only of limited value as meanings they help us sometimes to determine that whether this ver word is a noun or a verb so same is the case with morphological form it has got limited value sometimes it can tell us because ed is there that this is the second form of the verb or past form of the verb but not in all categories like drink drank drunk speak spoke spoken so here second or past form is not made with the help of ed on the other hand adjective cannot take ed and then adjective cannot show us at least the time adjective can take ed but adjective cannot show us the time so it is of limited value now the third criterion presented by peter sells is the syntactic function or distributional properties of lexical categories and they are very important and of course they will help us understand whether we can make this phrase or we can say that this is a, syn a, syn a lexical category or not for example let us try to determine what kind of lexical categories can occur in the following environments they can they have no they can they read dash the dash book he treats john very well he walked right dash the wall so they can have no car they can have car so noun can come they can play they can sing so verb can come but i cannot add adjective here they can happy wrong they can read this marvelous book so adjective can come here but here adverb cannot come they can read the kindly book wrong he treats john very well so adverb can come again after very verb cannot come or adjective here cannot come the categories that can go in the blanks are 
noun verb adjective adverb and preposition he walked right on the wall so only a restricted set of lexical categories can occur in each position then there are some other kinds of you know lexical categories that we can talk about in addition to these basic lexical categories does english have other lexical categories there are a few more consider the following syntactic environments dash students student hits the ball john sang a song mary played the piano the only words that can occur in the open slot in 13a are words like the a this that and so forth so these words are called determiners even quantifiers they can become determiners and some other kinds of lexical categories are conjunctions and complementizers can we find any supporting evidence for such lexical categorizations it's not so difficult to construct environments in which only these lexical elements appear consider the following we found out that dash very lucrative jobs were in jeopardy so dash very some very lucrative jobs or those very lucrative jobs or these very lucrative jobs so only a limited number of categories can come here so these articles possessives quantifiers and demonstratives all determine the referential property of jobs here and for this reason they are called determiners one clear piece of evidence for grouping these elements as the same category comes from the fact that they cannot occupy the same position at the same time of course we cannot add determiners or or you know quantifiers before the verb we cannot say ali can the sing we cannot say ali can some sing we cannot say ali can those sing so it means that in this way lexical category cannot be formed so we will have to see that determiners or you know these lexical categories where they can come what kind of position they can take in the sentence so it means that at certain particular places these certain words they can come and they can form the lexical categories so we should know that where the nouns can go where the verbs can go where the adjectives can go where the adverbs can go so 15 it contains wrong you know positions my these jobs are in jeopardy it is a wrong sentence some my jobs are in jeopardy it is a wrong sentence so words like my and these or some or any cannot come together now consider the following examples i think that learning is english is not easy at all so i think dash here that can come i doubt if you can help me in understanding this i doubt if or whether you can help me so if or whether can come here i am anxious for you to study english grammar hard so here only for can come once again the possible words that can occur in the specific slot 17 are strictly limited so in 16a i think that only that can come i doubt if or whether only these two words can come or i am anxious for so only for can come but remember after that you know the next clause it is telling us about the time it is tensed clause it is telling us the time i doubt if you can help you can help is telling us about the time so it means after if or whether tensed clause can come but i am anxious for you to study but after for tensed clause cannot come rather infinitival clause can come infinitive can come and infinitive too after that base form of the verb is coming it is being treated here as an auxiliary verb because after auxiliary verb do does did will can could may might we get first form or base form of the verb so to infinitival which is not telling us the time i am anxious for you to study so to study is infinitive and it is infinitival it is not telling us the time on the other hand i think learning english is english is is telling us about the time 
I doubt if or whether you can help me. Can help me telling us the time, which is present time. But I am anxious for you to study. To study is not telling us the time. It is just an infinitive. So it means that infinitive can be treated as an auxiliary verb in English syntax. And about auxiliaries, a detailed lecture will be given to you later on. So the author Peter Sells gives examples and clarifies these concepts. So he says that if italicized words are different from the other lexical categories that we have seen so far, they introduce a complement clause. So if that or for, they can introduce a complement clause marked above by the square brackets and may be sensitive to the tense of that clause. A tense clause is known as a finite clause because finite clause tells us about the time. As opposed to infinitive, infinitive clause does not tell us about the time. I think that learning English wrong. I doubt if you to help wrong. I am anxious for you should study wrong. It means that after that tensed clause will come. After if or whether tensed clause will come and after for infinitive or infinitival clause can come. Now in the last part of my video I should talk about the difference between preposition and particle. Peter Sell has given us some examples. Students wanted to write a letter. Students intended to surprise the teacher. Infinitive. Students objected to the teacher. Objected to the teacher. Here too is a preposition. Students sent letter to the teacher. Here too is a preposition. Because we cannot change the position of the word to preposition from this place. For example, the umpire called off the game. The umpire called off the game. Here off is not a preposition because we can say the umpire called the game off. So off can be separated from called. It is a particle. The two boys looked up the word. We can say the two boys looked the word up. So it means that it is a particle. It is not a preposition. The empire fell off the deck. We cannot say the empire fell the deck off. So it means that here off is a preposition. So remember when the particle it can be separated and it can be put after the object then it is a particle. If it cannot be separated and it cannot be put after the object then it is a preposition. Dear students. In my today's video, I have tried to explain lexical categories. I have talked about three criteria given by Peter Sells that we can look at the meanings of the words and we can determine whether it is a lexical category or not. And we have looked at nouns, adjectives, prepositions, adverbs, adjectives that this criterion can help us to a limited extent. So sometimes meaning will help us to determine that it is a lexical category, but at certain places meanings are not going to help us. Secondly, we have looked at the morphological form of the word. So suffixes like S or ES, they can tell us that it is a plural form of noun. ED can tell us that this is the past form of verb, but at certain places again it can help us, not always. The third criterion presented by Peter Sells is syntactic distributional property of the word or syntactic function of the word. So we have looked at that how syntactic function it can determine that something is a phrase, a constituent or not. And lastly, I have talked about the difference between particle and preposition. Thank you very much.